Eastern time. If you want to see what clicking on all cylinders looks like, just tune in to a Baltimore Ravens game. This team is red hot. After their 34-3 win over the Browns on Sunday, Baltimore is 3-0, a nice lead in the division, and this is not your typical Ravens team. Remember, the old Ravens were driven by defense. In their three wins this year, the Ravens have scored a total of 103 points. That's better than 34 a game. Not bad for a team whose defense boasts Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Brendan Iambadejo also plays on that defense alongside Lewis. He's a linebacker, had a great game Sunday, and he joins us now to talk about it. Brendan, what has gotten into this team's offense before we get to the defense? Where did all these points come from all of a sudden? Well, I think uh, Cam Cameron has a great group of guys around him. Uh, coach Matsko is an awesome offensive line coach. You just put everything together and it just makes for an awesome offense. Joe Flacco's, his role is expanding. We've got great running backs, great offensive line. Mason's leading the receiving course, so it's a really balanced offense. They can run the ball, they can pound it, and they can air it out as well. I mentioned uh, the win Sunday. You played well, had a sack, had a pick. Uh, this defense used to rule the team, but now it's, uh, it's known as a team that can sling it offensively too, as you mentioned. Is this an offensive team or a defensive team if you had to pick one? Well, it's still, it's still an offensive team. I'm sorry, it's still a defensive team, <laughs> but I think, what <laughs> I think what you're seeing though is that in practice, the defense really pushes the offense. So when it comes to Sunday, the defense has been working so hard with the offense that it's kind of unfair to say this, but they're not seeing a defense that's as tough as our defense that they're used to seeing in training camp and offseason OTAs. They're, it's ones on ones. So our, our defense is pushing our offense and making them better. And now we've come to a point where the offense is starting to push the defense and they're making us better. So it's really balanced, but we're still led by the defense, I'd have to say. Well, that makes perfect sense. You know, if you, if you practice against that defense all week and you can move it on them, odds are it'll be easier sledding on Sunday. All right, what's the playing with a guy like Ray Lewis, who you know is, is, is Hall of Fame bound, and he's so smart. What's the biggest thing you've learned from playing with him? That he's going to get all the blocks, and I'm going to be able to make a lot of plays because he's getting a whole <laughs> lot of attention. Now, um, Ray, Ray is such a professional, and what you see on the football field from Ray Lewis, you're, you're, he's an even better man off the field, if you can imagine that. So in every facet of life, whether it's being a dad, being a role model, being a raven, um, he makes me a better person. He's a, he's a role model to me. So just what you see on football is, is cheating Ray Lewis because the man that he is is so much greater than the football player that he is. You uh, are very political minded. You, you write a blog for a political section of the Huffington Post. And, and recently you wrote that you are in support of same sex marriage. Now we know football is a very macho league and, and, and some of the guys that play it are known as the macho men who might not always agree with thoughts like that. Have you, what kind of reaction have you received from that post? Oh, I've, I've got so, such positive feedback. I've never got so, min, so much fan mail and positive mail. Well, all the mail I get is positive, but I haven't, I've never received so much fan mail before. Everybody's just on my Facebook, and they're sending emails and letters to the facility thanking them, and a lot of them are straight people, and, and some of the people are um, lesbian and gay and, and whatnot, but everybody's just very thankful that an that athlete is stepping out in, in um speaking for a cause that's very important because equality is a very important issue and everybody should be treated fairly fairly and one of the things that I say is we're going to look back in 20 or 30 years and we're going to be ashamed that we treated our brothers our sisters our relatives our friends in this manner and didn't treat them as equal as us just because you know they have different behaviors than we do. I mentioned that you have a, a lot of political interests uh, down the road when football is all packed away and done uh, is a political office in your future? Um, I don't think so. I'm not really like a civil rights type of person or anything like that. But in the future, I would like to be the, an athletic director, um, prefer, preferably at my alma mater at UCLA. So I'm working towards that now. And you have to be balanced, you know, whether it comes to sports, business, marketing, equality, all these different things come into play when you're trying to get into corporate America later on in the future. Now, in addition to your skills on the field, I understand that uh, You've also brought your sense of style and fashion to the Ravens. Uh, you, you've won the best dress two years in a row on the team. Who on the Baltimore Ravens is most in need of a wardrobe, a wardrobe makeover? Well, was, I won the best dress when I was with the Chicago Bears a couple years ago. But uh, I think the person most in need of a wardrobe change would be Rex Ryan. And now he's in New York, so I think he's going to get some fashion tips with all the fashionistas <laughs> in New York. He's going to be looking real nice. He'll be styling and profiling well, now. Well, give him some tips. What specifically about Rex's uh, wardrobe are you not loving? 
Well, Rex, you know, he's got the boiler down there. He's got the belly. So <laughs> I say, uh, let's get a nice, uh, let's get a nice coat to cover that thing up. Let's get the, uh, get the shirt tucked into the belt, do a couple notches tighter on the belt, suck that thing a little bit, and maybe even get one of those wraps that you wrap around your tummy that sucks it all in, give him a nice little better shape so he's not looking so much like a, like a bowling ball. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, so you heard it here. Um, <laughs> Rex needs a girdle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Don't tell Rex. Man. I'm glad we don't have to play them this year. So oh, don't tell Rex because he'll definitely me, send somebody I'm after me. I'm sure he'll never hear about this, Brent, and I'm sure it'll never, it'll never get back to Rex. Uh, to keep in shape this summer, you, you trained with UFC fighter Rashad Evans, and I, I also read that you ran a triathlon. Which was more difficult? Oh, man, I think anytime your body's not used to something and you do it for the first time, you're going to have a tough time doing it. So I went to Rashad's um, martial arts camp. It's called Jackson Martial Arts in, in New Mexico, and I got my butt kicked by Rashad. But they had little five- and six-year-old kids starting off. Like, you know, we play football from when we're five and six now in MMA. The kids are starting off five, six, seven, eight years old. Wow. I was hoping they'd throw me a 10-year-old to start out with, but they <laughs> threw me right to the former light heavyweight champ, and he whooped me up. And uh, the, the triathlon, I had little old ladies passing me up. I was riding my mountain bike, and these little old ladies were on, like, 21-speed, um, um, what's his name, uh, Lance Armstrong uh, bikes, and they were just <laughs> fling, fling, shooting by me, man. It's, the triathlon was tough, but uh, I, I loved them both. I try to do as many different types of things as I can do to stay in shape. Well, it all helps. Uh, it didn't sound like you had a, a relaxing summer anyhow, but, uh, you know, it helps you get ready for the football season. Listen, uh, Ravens fans are loving what you guys have going on, 3-0, and and, and impressive in all of those victories. Brendan, congrats on a, on a terrific start, and uh, good luck to you and the club the rest of the yes. way. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Dana? <laughs> all right, JR, Sports Nation poll question. After three weeks, which quarterback has been the most inconsistent? Tony Romo getting all the love there, 41%. Uh, Cordell and John are with us. Guys, just nod if you agree or disagree. <laughs> Cordell, make a decision, man. Come on. John nodded. They're not Mike. Yeah, they can't say anything. This is like torture to them. Neither one can really say anything right now. We should. I can still say stuff. <laughs> I was about to say here, we'll just. Just a little bit. Just, you just scoot it over. Yeah, how you doing? Like Cordell, though, you know, Cordell's a quarterback. He knows plenty of hand signals. You know, That's right. He Come can on. audible. You missed it. During your interview, Cordell was standing on the other side of the studio, and he had the football, and he faked throwing it to me. And I was like, what? Like, you don't trust that I would catch it, which he didn't. And then he threw it. And I, I thought I saw a football. And seriously, <laughs> as I'm doing the interview with Brendan, I thought I saw a football fly through the studio. I was so that just spoke to you your focus running. then, right? You, you were, were able to keep your focus and continue with the interview. I at you. <laughs> yeah, she would have thrown it at me, Skip. That's true. Tigers and Twins scoreless right now. Uh, again, two games between these two right now for the Central. Skip, how is it going to end? Please don't pick my Tigers. Please don't pick my. How does it end? I'm sticking with my Twins. Yes. I mean, the Tigers. You gave up on them in August. <laughs> I did, but they lost slowly. And I know. Morno, and it's like they're still there. But it's you did say originally that it was going to be the twin that yeah. the Twins would move ahead of them. They're a machine. They are to me. Even though they don't have the World Series, they are the Steelers of Major League Baseball because different players, they just keep winning. We'll talk Houston uh, football tomorrow. Time ran out today, but we promise you on tomorrow's program. See ya. Mercury Fever, game one tonight, 9 Eastern, ESPN2.